you're sharing with? Are you sharing? Um, do you have any of a colour review, I think it is? Yeah. yeah. OK. So you have ten minutes. Fianna Fáil have a hard neck to speak about cutbacks to Garda stations. In November 2008, my party colleague, Deputy Pierce Doherty, who is then a senator, published a document called Awakening the West, which documented how rural communities were being hammered by the government. Of course, the government at, a time, at that time was a Fianna Fáil and Green coalition. By November 2008, nearly half of all the Garda stations in Cork Kerry, Clare, Galway and Roscommon had been reduced to a one Garda operating on a part-time basis. In many of those cases, Garda stations were closed on Sundays, while opening hours during the week were limited to only opening between 10am to 1pm. Even at that stage, the limited opening hours and lack of Garda strength in rural stations had given rise to the perception that Garda services were effectively ceasing to exist in many rural areas. There are towns where there were no guard of service for miles around. Of course, that's still the, the case today. This all took place under the watch of Fianna Fáil. At the 2009 annual conference of the Garda Representative Association, the then president, Michael O'Boyce, warned, and I quote, this government is driving experience out of Angarda Shikana, a rising number of members of all ranks who could and who want to continue to serve this country are considering retirement." End of quote. A year later, at the 2010 annual conference, he confirmed that sadly his words proved to be correct. In one Garda division alone, numbers were down by 20 in recent months. Also at the 2010 annual GRA conference, Michael O'Boy said, "'Disgracefully, there are no students in the Garda College for the first time in its history. Due to government policy, there will be no students in the college for a long time to come. And a continuous quote, and Garda Shikana is contracting by the direct action of the government. Experience is being driven out and no new blood is coming in. This is pushing the force to the brink of disaster. What was Fianna Fáil's response to this? Their current justice spokesperson, Niall Collins, called for the outgoing president of the Garda Representative Association, Michael Boyce, to be removed from the force by the then Garda Commissioner, Fakna Murphy. This government are implementing Fianna Fáil's 2010 National Recovery Plan when it comes to Garda cuts, the deal that they negotiated with the Troika. Fianna Fáil agreed with the Troika to cut Garda numbers from 14,500 that year to 13,500 the following year and to 13,000 in 2014, a total drop of 10%. Their plan also stated that there would be 25 million savings from unspecified garden management efficiencies and 140 million in overtime allowances and transport costs, much of it within the force. Are the public expected to believe that Fianna Fáil have now seen the error of their ways? Increasing Garda strength could have been achieved by continuing the process of civilianising Garda administrative services to international standards. This would also have had the effect of creating valuable local employment for civilians. In a 2007 report, Policing in Ireland, looking forward, the Garda inspectorate found that in many instances, small rural stations were serviced by one officer answering to a district headquarters, but mostly operating alone, without ready access to supervisors and official car or Garda IT systems. The inspector recommended the implementation of a consistent rural policing model that enhances visibility and makes best use of Garda resources in serving local communities. A centralised Garda service will increase rural isolation and undermine the people's sense of security in their homes. There is increasing evidence that police station closures can lead to increases in crime. In England, where rural services have, been, uh, have seen similar cutbacks uh, in police services, crime figures surged. Violent crime rose by 119% in country areas between 1988 and 99 and 2006 and 2007, compared with a national increase of 108% that year. I met with the Assistant Garda Commissioner Kieran Kenny in Donegal last week after the AGSI withdrew from talks and extension of the Croke Park Agreement, saying it would not tolerate further cuts uh, in pay. The reason why I asked to meet with the Assistant Commissioner 
uh, along with my colleague, Deputy Pierce Doherty, was to discuss policing in Donegal, where attacks on old people in their own homes have caused devastation in their lives, worry and stress to their families, and in some cases have forced older people to leave the homes they have lived in all their lives. I received assurances that Garda Shikana has taken steps to combat these attacks in Donegal. A specific operation, LEA, has been put in place, providing extra personnel and resources to the area. The Assistant Commissioner reported that 11 arrests have been made on both sides of the border, and some stolen property has been recovered. But this kind of guard operation should be the norm, rather than the exception. All over the state, and it should not take a crisis, as happened in Donegal, for Gardaí to be properly resourced. I commend the Gardaí for their actions in Donegal, but they should not have to wait for 11 aggravated burglaries to happen before being given the resources by this government to address this. Speak to Gardaí in any part of the state, and they will tell you they fear they can no longer provide a service to the public. Both representative organisations recognise the seriousness of the situation. Today's news that and this news that's been repeated, that another 100 Garda stations will be closed, you know, is a serious blow to rural Ireland, as well as some urban communities who have already disproportionately suffered under the cuts regime imposed by this and the previous government. This savage attack will also see 14 rural Garda districts closed in an effort to centralise the policing of huge swathes of uh, rural Ireland into urban areas. Essentially, they're amalgamating uh, rural districts. And this is the part that maybe it's been missed a little bit, we're focusing on the uh, Garda station close, closures, but the amalgamation, the centralisation of, of rural policing into the more urban areas is a big, big challenge also. Both the Irish Farmers Association and the Garda Representative Association, the representatives of rural Ireland and of the vast majority of Garda, have repeatedly rejected these ongoing station closures as they know the value of community policing. These are people who know rural communities, unlike those who are in charge of drafting these proposals. Over one in ten farmers, according to the AFA survey, has been a victim of, of crime. And again, this is the international challenge of looking at Garda statistics or, or police statistics, uh, where you have reported crimes versus surveys that show you know, a lot of people, sadly, are not reporting more minor uh, crimes. And that, that shouldn't be the case, but sadly it is. And therefore, you don't get an accurate reflection of the true levels of crime from official statistics. That's an international phenomenon, not, uh, not, uh, and it's an issue in Ireland. The government are attempting to spin this reform of policing structures when we all know that it is the austerity agenda at work here under the mask of reform. This work was already begun under Fianna Fáil, and it's being continued. It is pure uh, brass neckery, I have to say, finally, um, the, the, the motion uh, here tonight. And, and you know, Deputy Nile Collins is around politics a while and he knows it very, very well. But I mean, uh, nobody is fooled by it. Uh, I think the facts speak for themselves, and particularly the fact that when you had uh, Michael O'Boyce, uh, the president uh, then of the Garda Representative Association, who spoke the truth, who drafted a speech, and when the speech was presented to the then Minister Dermot O'Hearn, he didn't bother to show up at the annual event to take the heat. Uh, and to deal with the implications of the decisions that they had put in place over two years. Now, that, that speech that Michael Boyce was about to deliver, that's just two years ago. And I don't think the people of this country are suffering from some kind of collective amnesia. I think they have uh, a clear memory, and this, this motion over these next two days that Fianna Fáil have, have you know, been determined to go ahead with, despite the call by the minister and the government, which I agree with uh, in, this, in this occasion, um, is, is going to fool nobody and will achieve nothing for them, sadly. And the issue, which is an important issue around Garda resources, will be diminished by the fact that it's been forced ahead over these next two evenings.